Hey guys, well it's been two full days and I haven't seen any more lice on Miss Cheeky's here. She's looking a lot better, she's looking more active and generally happy so fingers crossed maybe we got them this time. I still haven't um, cleared out her tank yet. It got really cold yesterday and it was snowing and I just can't work in the garage when it's freezing like that so I'll probably wait till it warms back up a little bit this weekend or next week and then take it down but at least she's doing good so far hopefully she stays that way and she can go live with her new friends but she's looking a lot better okay time to get to work listening to Pandora and this came on and I just thought it was funny because it's like the perfect song to describe Betta's because they're always begging. Um, anyway, I realized the other day that I forgot to show you guys another one of the live foods I feed and that's confused flower beetles. Um, basically what they are, they're beetles that live in flower. You can see some of the adults around they're the black ones and what you feed is not the beetles themselves but the larvae and I don't have my sifter handy but maybe I can find a larvae for you okay I picked the larvae out and you can see they're really tiny they're oh how big are they? they're about the size of maybe a grain of rice but a lot thinner um, I don't know I'm not good with like millimeters and all that so I really couldn't tell you but maybe like a quarter of an inch less than that but they're just little larvae they look kind of like mealworms or anything like that that you may have seen if you have reptiles you feed and um, the fish really seem to like them. They're good for, you know, anything that's big enough to eat something that big. But as far as keeping the culture alive, it's really easy. You just get a starter, you put it in some flour, and basically you forget about it. And that's all. You don't need, they eat the flour, they live in the flour. And so every like six months or even longer than that, you just sift all the bugs out and refresh the flower. And that's all you need to do. And to culture, or not to culture, to harvest them, again, you just sift them out, pick out the larvae and feed them. And they sink. So they're really good for bettas and other fry that are used to sinking foods. Some of my fish will eat the adults some of my wilds but the adults have a really hard like outer shell and I find that the fish don't really like eating the adults but they do like eating the larvae so that's another live food that I feed and I just I forget about it because it just kind of sits in a corner and you know when you don't have to feed it or do anything to it you kind of forget you have it so that's my confused flower beetles so I just wanted to chime in about that because that's another food that's not really common but I really like because it's just so stinking easy. Um, so now I'm going to do some water changes and I might clean all this crap off and do some pictures and show you how I take pictures of my fish. Weekly duckweed for the goldfishes. I'd say this is about a cup. Maybe a little less than a cup. So we'll see how long it takes these guys to go through that. They're excited. They like duckweed. Alright. I always try to put it over on this side because if you stick it over here where the, um, the power filter is, it just gets knocked down and creates a big mess. So... There we go. 
doesn't look like a lot because it's still all bunched up but the entire top of this 30 was covered you can still see I left a little bit I don't ever take all of it but the entire top of that 30 was covered and I took about half of what's on top of my 10 gallon guppy tank as well it looks like a couple snails hitchhiked over but that's okay because I already have ram's horns in here and they'll go to town eating all this and then in a couple days I'll have to clean the filters because for whatever reason the duckweed clogs the filters a lot more than you know when I feed them goldfish pellets or flakes or anything like that. Glowing eyes. I'm trying to sneak up on them. I hope you guys can see that. Their eyes just glow. These are the patodi. I think it's so cool. I've kept a few other species in this complex, which is the Unimaculata complex, but none of them have shown this trait where their eyes just get super bright. You can even see the difference between the male on the right and the male on the left. Like, they can turn their eye shine on and off. It's just really cool, I think. I think they're so pretty when they turn it on, too. And, of course, the sword tail has to get in on the fun. He's showing off for that female right there. Ugh, sword tail move! Really cool. I just love these guys. Okay, now I really do have to get back to work. I could just sit and watch him show off all day, but I do not have time for that. These buttheads killed one of my sword tails. It's back there. Well, I guess it's time for you guys to go on with the big fish. Bad Patodi. Bad. I don't know why they killed them. I've never had them kill them before. But I guess it's time. Look at the colors on that one. Very pretty. Hopefully these guys won't get bullied too much by the bigger ones. But I don't have anywhere else to separate these guys. And I don't want them to kill all my sword tails. So it's time to move on up. Luckily now there's enough plants in here that it shouldn't be an issue. But... You just never know. I really need to get some caves. I might go to Home Depot and see if I can find some PVC. Make some caves for them. Blackheads. You guys are buttheads. They're eating um, the beef heart sticks. Oh no, the earthworm sticks. Same difference. You can see they're a little bit too big, but they just kind of carry them around until they soften up and then they'll bite pieces off. It's really funny because occasionally you get two of them that are playing tug of war with one of these sticks. And you've got one fish on one end and one on the other. And they're just pulling at it. It's hilarious. That guy is really pretty. This one too. I think I'm male heavy on these guys, so that's gonna be a problem when trying to rehome these. 
but luckily with mouth brooders it's always good to sell one male and two or one female and two males so hopefully I won't have too much trouble rehoming them I'm mad they killed one of my sword tails though luckily it wasn't one of the males because I only have two males in here so far but about to do a water change on these I'm trying to get these plants to grow and they're just not doing it I might have to like actually fertilize I don't ever put fertilizer in there but maybe that's what they need to really get going I might need to replace the bulbs too this guy is turning out really pretty he was green he looked just like this guy and then he marbled to like basically white now he's starting to get some blue and green patches back pretty guy this guy was all blue and now he's black and white can't get a good view of him with the flash This one's cellophane and has always been cellophane and looks like she might continue to be cellophane, but I'm actually thinking that she might be turning into a he. And it's well known that bettas can turn from female to male. Um, I just noticed because I don't see her ovaries very easily. Whereas like if we look at this little red female down here, you can easily see her ovaries if she turns around. Come over here. It's that white triangular thing inside her body. Come here. They never want to cooperate when you're trying to get them on film or get their picture. Turn around so I can, there we go. So yeah, you see that white triangle? That's her ovaries. We should be able to see that on this female, but I'm not seeing it. So she might be turning into a he. And I really need to clean the water spots off my jars. Here's some other girls. This girl is losing all her red. This girl's had red too and lost it but she's staying pretty much blue now some boys this guy is just vicious I call him the green killing machine he's a gorgeous fish though this guy's my favorite out of the whole spawn both of these two both of these are my favorites but I just prefer this guy slightly more just because this guy's very extreme. He's got, you know, extreme over half moon spread and lots of branching and he's a little bit too extreme for my taste. Whereas this guy has a little bit less branching, but still it's really good form. This guy's really nice too. Looks like he's getting tired. Can you turn around and flare for me? No. These two will flare all day. And these guys are siblings. They're just runts. But that's a female. This guy's a little male. This, These two are my favorite females out of the spawn so far. And probably not going to be able to see them very well because of the water stains. And then this girl is a sibling. And that girl is a sibling as well. Oh, that's a pretty good view. Yeah, I like both of these girls. There's the steel boy. Now he's kind of flaring. Uh, that's just a quick view of the placots. I am doing water changes and I just saw this guy flaring and thought the way his marbling is coming back is really pretty. Excited to see how he continues to change. 
Everybody's eating green beans. And a little bit of shrimp. I don't give them shrimp very often because it's, you know, got salt in it and it's cooked. I don't often get raw shrimp. So, but I had a little bit of just like cooked salad shrimp left over and I thawed it out and rinsed it, rinsed it, rinsed it really, really good. And so they're getting a little bit of a treat. The snails are on the green beans. They love the green beans. Molly's are picking at the salmon or the shrimp. And they'll eat the green beans too. When did an assassin snail get in this tank? Gee whiz. I have no idea how that assassin snail got in there. I need to pick it out. But they seem to like it. Cheeky's got a couple green beans. And who else? These guys, this tank gets a lot of green beans because it has the plecos and the snails. But of course the piggies also eat it, the sword tails and the patodi. This one ate a whole bunch of shrimp. Now he's got a big fat belly. Same for these guys down here, which is just more of the same, except I don't have any plecos down here. I uh, gave a couple to the goldfish, even though they have duckweed. And Susie got some shrimp, which she really likes. Do you hear her teeth hit the glass? She's mean. You're mean, Susie. So I think that's it for today. I have the right side of my rack left to do for water changes. And that's going to be it for today. I am skipping my daily water change on the fry tanks because I tested them yesterday and I found out that my KH is extremely low and I think it may possibly be the reason why I had such a big die off in this tank. So I'm cutting back on water changes a little bit, just a little bit. Um, monitoring nitrates and I'm gonna start dripping the water in very slowly to kind of um, mitigate that pH change because the pH in this tank was 7.4 and the pH in my aged trash can is 7.8 um, so there's something going on with my tap water my pH used to come out at 8 and my KH was like 6 so I'm going to be looking into that but for right now I have to go figure out why my sister's pug is howling when I just fed him and let him out and all that but oh look there's a nice big copper fry right there so they're in there they're doing good there's just not a lot of them so it's hard to see them but all right that's it for today just kind of like a random hodgepodge of stuff today I didn't get a chance to get my light box out and take pictures so We'll definitely be doing that either tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday. So, I love watching these guys. Because when I feed them, all the babies come out of the woodwork. It goes from looking like there's just a couple fish in here to like hundreds all of a sudden. Really fun. Okay, that's it. See you guys tomorrow. Pretty say goodnight. Good job.